Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Track Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us, and I say that in a very special way if this happens to be your very first day to tune in with us. Thank you for coming. Thank you for wanting to grow in the knowledge of the Lord. Right now, my Bible is sitting open in front of me to the book of 2 Peter. We're in chapter 2. We're at the tail end of the chapter. Right now, reach over, pick up your own copy of God's Word, if that's at all possible. Turn to 2 Peter 2. With me, please, I'll begin to read at verse 20 here in a moment. As we go through our time today, I will be encouraging you to get a free sample packet of our English gospel tracks. My announcer is going to give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and mailing address. He'll do that at the end. So have pen and paper ready to jot down our contact information. I'm going to highlight one of those gospel tracks in a moment. Uh, By the way, with that pen and paper, have it handy so that you can jot down an outline that we'll be using here today in our study time. Before we go any farther, let me lead into our Bible study time this way. All any of us needs to do to stir up a lively and perhaps even a volatile discussion is to say three words. They are this, Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, if you bring up these two cities in a conversation, eyes will widen, adrenaline is going to begin to pump, and the backbones of many around you are going to stiffen up. You know why? Because these two cities cut to the very core of the moral debate and the moral slide presently going on in our society. And even those with virtually no Bible knowledge know about these two towns of Sodom and Gomorrah. Many people believe that these two cities are dist- or were destroyed by the act of God's judgment due to their sexual sins. There's others, though, who deny that the whole thing ever happened at all. It was just a myth. But then there's a third group who say that the Bible does not say these cities were destroyed due to moral issues. They say they were destroyed due to pride and for not helping the poor. Well, today, our goal is not to deal with the why question about why Sodom and Gomorrah were so harshly punished. Our goal today is to see that some people at that point in time and even now are going to endure a worse treatment in hell forever and ever and ever than even Sodom and Gomorrah. Stay tuned. Get your Bible. Get that paper and pen ready. I mentioned a gospel tract here a moment ago. You do know what a gospel tract is, right? A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The Word of God lays out clearly that salvation is in only and the person of Jesus Christ, and each of our over 40 gospel tracts explains the gospel just coming at the same truth from a little different vantage point. The gospel tract in my hand right now is for young people, that is older, elementary age young people. It's entitled, Are You Afraid? Are You Afraid? I wrote this track. It was designed to be used and helpful at Halloween time, but the word Halloween does not appear appear here. There are black and orange coloring scheme onto the track to help promote that because at Halloween time, kiddos go around the corner, around the street, and they get candy from people. And if you, if they come to your house, you and I can give them a gospel track along with candy and give them the gospel. No matter what your view of Halloween is, if I got lost people coming to my door, I'm going to give them the gospel. This gospel track 
talks about the fact that many children face great fears these days, but God has an answer to them. We answer it from one verse and explain that verse in the track. Friend, if you're looking for a good tool to help explain the gospel to kids, here it is. Are you afraid? Stay tuned when my announcer gives at the end our contact information, or you can go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. Second Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 20, the Bible says this, For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than, after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Stop, please, right there. Now, these verses speak about the dangers awaiting uh, this religious group we call apostates or false teachers. The entirety of 2 Peter 2 is about these people. Our verses are the fifth section, at least in my outline, of this second chapter, and I've titled this fifth section this way, Acknowledging the danger, acknowledging to the danger. To help me walk through verses 20, 21, and 22, I've been using words all beginning with the letter E, like in the word elephant. My first one was the word escape, based upon verse 20. My second word was the word entangled, still based upon verse 20. My third word today will be end, E-N-D, end, based upon verses 20 and 21. My final word, not today, but we'll get there, will be the word education, based upon verse 22. So today, we're going to focus on the end. What will be the end of these false teachers? And just in case you missed the point, verse 20 ends by saying that the latter end, the final end of these false teachers will be worse for them than what their end was going to be at the beginning. Let me explain all this doing three things. First of all, I'm going to talk about their original or first end. Then I want to talk about their final end. And then lastly, their flagrant error, their first end, their final end, and their flagrant error. All right. What was the first or the original end to which these these false teachers were headed? These false teachers did not begin as false teachers. They began where every one of us begins. All of us are born as sinners, and very, very soon we commit sins that reveals exactly what we are. We're sinners. So we and these folk as well came into the world already condemned as sinners, These folk were headed to the lake of fire. The only hope for them was that somebody would tell them the gospel and they would receive the gospel of Christ. Romans chapters 1, 2, and 3 clearly lay out this truth that all people who have heard the clear plan of salvation or who have not heard the clear plan of salvation are without excuse before God because they have not acknowledged their creator God. So the lake of fire was their first original end. But then, secondly, what will be their final end now? Look at the end of verse 20. It says this, the latter end is worse with them, these false teachers, than the beginning. While the Bible does not tell us that the final state of all who do not receive Christ as Savior will be the lake of fire, The Bible also says that there are degrees of punishment in this place. Hell is called a place of torment, a place of darkness, a place of weeping and wailing and horrible anguish. And yes, it's called a place of fire. And all of this is going to last forever. But yet, the Bible says that some in hell will face a worse condition than others will. If I were to turn back to Matthew 10, there I would find that Jesus said some of the cities in Israel during his day are going to endure harsher punishment than would the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. 
while Sodom and Gomorrah did endure a severe judgment of fiery hailstones, their final or their ultimate judgment, that's not happened yet. This will take place at what's called the great white throne judgment described in Revelation chapter 20. But let me come back again to the book of Matthew. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus said that the particular city of Capernaum would endure worse judgment than Sodom and Gomorrah. So obviously there are going to be degrees of pain and judgment in hell. Now, frankly, that's all we can really say because the Bible doesn't give us any more detail and any more information on this biblical truth. But now thirdly, what is the flagrant error of these false teachers that causes their final end to be so bad? Well, verse 21 says, For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than, after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Now, friend, the way of righteousness is simply a term describing the truth about Jesus and his salvation. As sinners, we are unrighteous. All of us are. We do wrong. We do unright deeds. We call them sin. Jesus is called the son of righteousness. At the time a person receives Jesus as Savior, he is made unto them righteousness. That simply means he gives them his righteousness. And people are commanded to walk in the way of righteousness. But these false teachers, they had been taught the way of righteousness, but turned and rejected it. Just as those in Jesus' day who saw his miracles but would not believe in him, just as their future is worse due to the quality, the caliber of light and truth that they had received and they had rejected it, just as it will be worse for them, so it will be worse with these false teachers because they had known the way of righteousness. They taught, as verse 20 says, they were taught the way of truth. Sadly, my friend, it will be worse for you too if you who know about Jesus Christ, you know he is the Son of God, you know he was born with the innocency, had no sin, lived a sinless life, you know that. You celebrate that. You enjoy the Christmas season. You know he lived a sinless life. You know he went about doing good. You know that he went to Calvary and died there. He was innocent. He had done no wrong, but he died as a sinner because he was taking our place. You've even heard the fact that he died and shed his blood to pay the sin debt of the world. But that sin payment only becomes practical, only becomes active when individually you and I receive Christ and claim him as our Savior by faith. We repent of our sin. We claim Christ as our Savior. Have you done that? If you have not done that, and yet you know all this truth, the day of final judgment will be a sad, harsh, horrible day. It'll be worse for you in the day of judgment because you've known the way of truth and you've turned from it. Don't turn today. Receive Christ as your Savior. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.